Atari has released a brand new game console PC hybrid to Indiegogo backers more than three years after successfully raising several million dollars for more than 11,000 people, and the company is planning a wider commercial release later in 2021. Atari is synonymous with video games of the 1970s and 80s, but they haven't been a hardware player in decades. Now some engineers in California are teaming up with the French Atari to try something new. Pay homage to their industry launching roots while offering a modern and open experience just as the next generation of game consoles get underway. What's great, what's not, and what is it? Let's take a look with a full review. Stylish and stunning design. The first thing to bring up is how great the VCS looks. It is a strong visual aesthetic designed by an artist and it shows. Unlike the AV receiver sized pile of plastic like the PlayStation 5 or big black box of the Xbox, the VCS is gorgeous. Most people don't care what their console looks like. But if you do have an eye toward visual design or live with someone who does, the VCS is a welcome cause to celebrate. I'll still give the original VCS the personal nod for best ever looks, but the look of the new VCS is a triumph. The excellent design extends to the classic controller, which captures the functionality and look of the original handbreaker, but makes it comfortable and responsive. It is flat out the best Atari style joystick and paddle yet released for the PC, and it may have a long life no matter what happens with the console. The tech is versatile but limited. At its core, the VCS is a low to mid-spec PC, kind of like the $300 laptop you'd get at Walmart. You can add RAM and put in a speedy M2 drive to run an alternate operating system, and the hardware is compatible with just about anything PC, like hard drives, controllers, keyboards, mice, that kind of thing. It works well as long as you're not trying to do something more than it's capable of, and I've had no issues with the hardware outside of a few early days bugs. Plenty of rage has been focused online on the reality that anyone who can build their own PC or get a Raspberry Pi to work can make a VCS-like device for less money or with better tech. That is true, but it's also missing the point. The VCS just works when it's working well and it offers a lot of tinkering for a less technical user. The VCS markets itself as allowing people to game, stream, and connect like never before. That is some marketing talk, it has been possible before, but what's new is bringing this capability to the console market in a way that opens up options to people who like to plug things in and have them work. The experience is indie retro gaming fun with an Atari brand. The VCS comes with the Atari Vault, the company's long-standing collection of 100 arcade and VCS games so you can get on your Asteroids and Centipede fix. Each of the games has been tweaked to take advantage of the classic controller, including Paddle Twist. That plus Rumble makes for a modern experience that really gets the controls right. The VCS is not just about Atari games, though, and has about a dozen or more indie titles to buy for between $4 and $25. I found them all of good quality. They're not going to turn heads for their uniqueness or bold design, but I've played at least some of almost all of them, and they exceeded my expectations. As a group, they offer a surprisingly great fun launch lineup. The VCS has apps like Netflix, YouTube, Disney+, Hulu, Twitch, Plex, and others, but it also has what could be a killer app in its integrated Google Chrome. Chrome support means the entirety of Google services, docs, sheets, photos, even the gaming service Stadia are on the VCS and work. It doesn't take long before you see the potential of the VCS as the hybrid device it claims to be. Sure, you can just plug it into a living room TV, but it can go anywhere you want in HDMI output. The VCS also has official Discord support, which is worth mentioning because it's not there on the other consoles. Another big aspect of the VCS is its PC mode, which lets the user boot Windows 10 or another operating system like Linux with a connected SSD or internal M2 drive. This turns the VCS into a computer that can run anything within its specs. This also means things like emulators, live streaming software, and Steam games. So it looks great, plays great, runs great, and has a lot of potential. What is wrong with it? The bad. One. 
the 4K video is not very good. While the VCS can technically output a 4K signal, the experience is poor. It looks like trying to run Windows 10 on a 10 to 15 year old laptop. Atari has it prominently advertised as 4K on the box, but I found it laggy and freezy in the 4K video of mediocre quality. If you have a 4K TV, it probably has Netflix. And if you do a comparison between your TV and the VCS, the results are clear. It's a bummer, but the 2K experience is really, really good. If you buy the new VCS for 4K though, you're gonna be disappointed. Two, there are Bluetooth and wireless issues. My VCS in particular had a terrible experience with its Wi-Fi. It had a strangely hampered download speed, a fraction of what to get everywhere else. I think the hardware may just be bad on my VCS, but I experienced frequent connection drops and an inability to use the VCS store until I plugged in an Ethernet cable, at which point all of that went away and never returned. I've been able to use the Wi-Fi since, but only intermittently. Additionally, quite a few VCS owners are reporting issues with Bluetooth, and I've had a few issues getting peripherals connected. Um, so both of these issues can hopefully be fixed with a firmware update by Atari in the future, but if they don't, it's a problem. Three, no accessibility options. The year is 2021, and even last-gen consoles had accessibility options for those in need of them. The VCS has none, and few games have them either. This is simply not acceptable and denies the VCS as an option for too many people. 4. Finally, the price. This topic has caused the most discussion online, but it's worth bringing up because Atari wants the VCS to be a commercial success. Everyone who backed the VCS through Indiegogo paid about $300 for it, along with a classic controller. That price seemed fair, and I didn't have any issue paying it. Atari has already announced plans to charge $400 for the console when it gets a retail release. It will include a classic and modern controller, each that retail for $60 each, but that price tag is far less attractive. For $100 more, you can get a next-gen console like the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, and for $100 less, you can get a Nintendo Switch, which still has a lot of life left in it. If Atari can figure out how to bring the price back down to $300 with an included classic controller, I think they'll have a much better chance to carve out a space in the current console market. Final thoughts. The Atari VCS is a stylish and exciting game console for those of us who grew up with the original 4-6 to six Switch Ataris, but it's more than a retro throwback, offering new games and the internet landscape of 2021 in a stylish statement piece that's downright fun to play and mess around with. It doesn't do 4K well, and it does have some limitations, but its positives outweigh its negatives. The classic controller is a game changer, and Atari and its engineers have managed to make something really special. If you got something out of this video, maybe subscribe to my channel on YouTube or follow me at twitch.tv slash mockduck. I'm also on facebook.com slash mockduckplaysgames. I'll be making videos about the games, apps, and everything else VCS in the coming weeks. Thanks for being here.